Hi there, um, thanks for having me along at Cowen. It's good to be back again. Uh, my name's Gareth, I'm from Stevenston in Tenna Christian Fellowship, and it's good to be here to, to share with you again from God's Word. I hope you're looking forward to Christmas. Um, I love the, the Christmas time, um, getting the tree up, getting the lights up, getting together with family when all the, the Christmas movies are on TV. I, I love this time of year. I wonder if you're looking forward to it again this time of year. But I wonder if you ever think about the Christmas story, about the, the birth of the Lord Jesus in Bethlehem, about God coming into the world in the person of Jesus. I wonder if you've given that any thought before. Um, I wonder what your response is to the Christmas story, as I'm sure you hear it each year at a nativity play, or you see it on the telly, or you, you hear it at church. As you hear the Christmas story, what is your response to the story? What do you think about it? Have you, do you think about it at all? Maybe you, you don't really believe it happened and, and you don't think about it at all. Maybe you think something did happen and, and you've got some kind of faith in God that, that Jesus came, but it doesn't really make any difference to your life today. I wonder what your response is to the Christmas story. We're going to think about Mary's response um, today. I, I'm thinking about Mary's song. Um, as you'll know, the, the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and told her that she was going to give birth to the Lord Jesus. She was a virgin, she'd never slept with a man before, and yet she was, there was going to be a child conceived within her, and she was going to give birth to Jesus, who is the Son of God. What was Mary's response to that? How did Mary comprehend what the angel was telling her? Well, in Luke's Gospel, he records for us Mary's song. After Mary had heard the, what the angel said, she sang a song of praise, and Mary's song is recorded for us. And we're going to read it together. This is in Luke chapter 1. Uh, and starting at verse 46, and I'm going to read Mary's song just now. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but he has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but he has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever just as he promised our ancestors. And God will bless his word as we come to think about Mary's reflection and Mary's prayer and her song as she speaks to God. The first thing to note about Mary's response is that she humbly believes what God has said. She accepts what the angel says as the truth. We read there, my soul rejoices in God, my saviour, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. And Mary accepts what God is saying is true. That's a big thing for Mary. Mary's a teenager and she's going to experience scandal. She's from a small town in Nazareth and people in a small town talk. They're going to see soon that Mary is pregnant and she's expecting and she's not married. In fact, we read in Matthew's Gospel how her betrothed Joseph thought she was having an affair and was ready to divorce her before the angel spoke to him. So there was scandal involved at the birth of the Lord Jesus. As Jesus grew up, people would talk about him and they would know that Mary and Joseph weren't married when Jesus was conceived. And yet Mary accepts that. People are going to reject Jesus. A few months after this, maybe a year or so after this, Herod is going to order the deaths of all the children in Bethlehem. And Mary and Joseph have to flee to Egypt. And all through Jesus' life, there were people who rejected him and spat at him and, and had no time for him. And ultimately, those people would crucify him. And Mary would know that in Mary's family, some of Mary's other children, James and Jude, that were born after the Lord Jesus, they didn't believe Jesus was God. Even in her own family, there was people who rejected her son. Mary was not going to have an easy time. It was going to be a difficult life raising the, the Messiah and, and seeing Jesus grow up. And yet she accepts what God has said and she believes what God has said and she believes what God has said is going to be good. She says that she's going to be honoured among all women. She's trusting in what God has promised. How, has, how is Mary's faith so strong? How is it that she just accepts what God says? Because she knows God really well. She knows God's word. As we read through this song, she quotes the Old Testament a lot and she's expecting God to answer and she trusts in God. She knows what God is like. And that's how she trusts in him and believes what he says. 
The next thing, she's expecting great things from God. It says this in verse 39. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Mary was aware how amazing this was that was happening. God the Son is becoming a human being. This is a miracle. This is the most amazing thing that's ever happened. Paul says the mystery of godliness is great. We can't understand what God is doing, but it's amazing. We just have to worship God. All babies are miracles, really. Um, I've got two nephews. One's four, he's about to turn five. One's one, he's about to turn two. And you can see them grow up. You can see how God knits babies together in their mother's wombs and then they're tiny and they start to grow up and they learn to speak and they learn to walk and and what God does is amazing uh, we, we just glorify God and, and we don't really understand how it works but but God is is all babies are, are miracles but Jesus is extra special see Jesus was born of a virgin and the Holy Spirit conceived um, Jesus within Mary and um, that's an amazing thing can you imagine God can do anything he wants? So he, as God's son came into the world, he could have done it any way he wants. So if Mary and Joseph had slept together normally and God brought his son into the world that way, we would know that Jesus was a real human being. But how would we know that he was any different? How would we know that he was the son of God if he just had a normal mum and dad? The other way God could have done it, Jesus could just have come down as a fully grown man at 30 years old, come straight down from heaven and just began to teach people and to do miracles. And we would have no doubt that he was the son of God. I mean, God would come down from heaven and just start to teach. But how would we know he was a real human being? We wouldn't trust that because how, he, he doesn't, he's not like us at all. He comes down from heaven. The way God has done it, that Jesus was born of a virgin, that the Holy Spirit conceived Jesus within Mary. We know that Jesus is the son of God and we know that he's a real human being. It's a miracle what God has done. Uh, and yet this is how his son came into the world. It's an amazing thing. And Mary appreciates that. Uh, and she knows what God is doing. The other thing that Mary's song tells us, she's expecting God to bring justice. And she's expecting God to do what is right. He's going to um, humble the proud and bring down the rulers. Uh, and he's going to leave the rich empty. And he's going to lift up the humble. He's going to exalt the humble. In other words, he's going to sort things out. Our world is broken. It's a mess. We struggle with our sin. We're all sinners. We've all broken God's law. None of us put God first. Uh, and all of us are selfish. And our world is fallen. You, you don't have to look very far to see that. Just watch the news. Just see what's happening around the world. And you'll agree that this world is broken and it's stained with sin. Jesus came to rescue us. He came to save us from our sin. And Mary appreciates that God is answering their prayers. And he's coming to set the world right. He's coming to bring righteousness and he's coming to bring justice. And that's what Jesus came to do. As Jesus grew up, he acted righteously. He acted justly. He silenced the hypocrites. He silenced the false teachers. Uh, and he looked out for the outcasts, the broken, the, the, the women, the, the, the poor. And he lifted them up and exalted them. That's what Jesus is like. And when Jesus comes back again to rule the world, that's what it's going to be like again. But that's quite scary because... If you're anything like me, I'm not good. I'm a sinner. I've broken God's law. And the fact that God is good and he's righteous is quite scary because it means he'll need to sort me out as well. And that's a terrifying thing. Jesus is coming back to judge the world. But the last thing Mary points out is that God is merciful and he remembers his prom promises. He says, he, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. God loves us and God cares about us and God promised the nation of Israel he would rescue them, he would send the Messiah into the world and Mary realises that God is keeping his promises. But Jesus isn't just the Messiah of Israel, he is that but he's the saviour of the whole world. God came to rescue us from our sin in the person of Jesus and Jesus is merciful, he loves you, he cares about you, he's risen from the dead, he's in heaven today and he wants to save you today. I wonder what your response is as you hear the Christmas story over the next few weeks, as you think about Jesus being born, as you think about God coming into the world, what is your response? Will you be like Mary and believe and accept what God has done and worship God? God is coming to sort out the problems in the world and he can rescue us from our sin and he loves you today and Jesus came to save you from your sin. He died on the cross and he rose again from the dead. What's your response to that? I wonder if you would be like Mary and just believe and accept what God has done. The Christians at Cowinning, uh, we would all um, testify, and, and myself, we would testify to the truth that God is merciful, that he changes lives, he's transformed our lives today, 
uh, and he can do the same for you. I wonder, are you trusting in the Lord Jesus? What's your response to the Christmas stories? You hear again about God coming into the world. What is your response? I, I leave it with you.